All right, guys, now that I have my track plan and my turnouts and ground throws all installed and working very, very nicely, I must say, I am going to start making the scene come alive. You want to see what I'm talking about? Watch this video. Coming right up. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to a Vinny Vid Productions video featuring BNSS 6951. Hi, I'm Vinny and I'll be your host. If you guys like model railroads, obsessions, layout updates, scratch builds, and scenery work, some rail fanning, then this is the channel for you. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there. And after you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell. And to help me out with my analytics, don't forget to give me the thumbs up. I really appreciate your help and support. <clears throat> Let's get on with this video. First, a little word from my sponsor. This Vinny Vid production brought to you by Yankee Dabbler. For all your model railroad needs, check out Yankee Dabbler. Don't forget, 7% discount with BNSF 6951. And by Highways and Byways, awesome street graphics for your roads and streets on your model railroad layout. If you guys are looking for sophisticated model railroad electronics, Logic Rail Technology has what you need. For a 5% discount on certain items, use code BNSF6951. Alright guys, now it's time for the next step on your layout. Trees! I have been dealing with Bob for 7 years now and he does excellent work on his trees. So if you need some trees on your layout, check out Long Shadow's Trees. Tell them the cuz sent you. Alright guys, we're going to start off number 5 with the uh, some suggestions that I had gotten from you guys in my comments on my last video. If you remember during that video I was talking about putting a crossover here uh, just to make it shorter for the train to uh, not go as far to do the, the runaround. But in actuality, it's only about 18 inches to the next turnout. So I decided to listen to you guys and take this out of here. So that's not going to happen. And I'd have to do too much track work. I'd have to move one of these track over this way or this one over that way. And that's not going to work because everything else is all set up. All right. We're going to move on down the line here. <coughs> and another thing that I had listened to my uh, subscribers and comments was down here. I was talking about putting an extra inch onto this track here so I can get the four tankers in there. But some of my subscribers said, why don't you just make it curved? So I did that right here, as you can see. And that gives me more than enough room to get my two locomotives and four tankers on there. So guys, thanks for all your input. I really do appreciate it. Today, <coughs> this video is basically going to be uh, concentrating on some scenery. I'm tired of looking at this board that's not really all uh, scenic up. Some of it down here, oops, sorry about that, needs to get freshened up and some color put in there. So we're going to be doing all of that today. We're going to start back here where it's the most naked, all back in this area. I'm not going to do anything uh, in the industry itself only because I don't know where all the buildings are actually going to be finally so for now we're going to start in this area and as you can see if I can turn this around I have my cart full of um, goodies to do uh, ground cover and ballast and all that kind of good stuff so stay tuned let me get all set up and we'll start this video off uh, we'll be right back Alright guys, for us to start this project, we're going to need a few things. Of course, we're going to need some ground cover, which is uh, dirt that I have gotten from a uh, rail thinning trip that I had gone on. And we're going to use this stuff called Ballast Magic. Now, I got this from my Yankee Dabbler, and it's real cool to use. I already did a demonstration on this, but um, you put seven parts, seven parts of your ground cover, and this works with ballast it's called that ma uh, magic ballast, but you can use it for uh, ground cover also. So seven of these: one, two, three, four, five, 
six and seven. All right. Then only one of these. You can actually put more of this if you want. Uh, and I also found out that once you put this down, you can also put your other ground cover right on top of it while this is still wet. And by wet, it does eliminate one of your deals that you have to do. And that is to, come on, can you give me some more? There you go. All right, we just throw that in there. this up. Now the step that you save is putting this down uh, dry. <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure you got a good mixture in there. <clears throat> so now you know that when we do our normal uh, ground cover, we would put the ground cover on, we would squirt it with water and alcohol or detergent or whatever, and then we'd wet it with the glue. Well, this, that, this eliminates that step. So basically, we're going to take, and we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle this on. Now, I know the dirt's going to be a little bit different color here, and that's okay because this is an in industrial site. So the dirt might be a, a bit different. <clears throat> I'm also going to try and get some ballasting done in this video. We're going to use the same stuff, the ballast, ma magic ballast, or whatever it's called. I should get the name right. It's called Ballast Magic. And you can get this at Yankee Babbler. And I don't think it was very much money. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've had this. Sorry about my arm being in the way, guys. <clears throat> the hardest thing sometimes is to figure out where you're going to put your camera for your shots that you want to do. Yeah, I'm just tired of looking at all this uh, bare plywood. It's been like this since I built the layout. And when I get to my turnouts, I usually go around the throw bars and worry about them at a later date. I'll get right up to the track and let the ballast do the rest. I'm just used to using the spoon technique. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I had some uh, uh, condiment squirters. Only thing is, in N-Scale, the, the stuff is so fine, it just flies out of there too fast. I want to make sure I got everything covered here. Now, the dirt that I had gotten, I had to sift. <clears throat> um, and because I had to sift it, there was different sized rocks and stuff that was coming out. So what I did was, I kept the ones that were small enough to be used as ballast and that's what we're going to use in this video <clears throat> I'm covering up all the bare spots that I see right now uh, I'm not gonna, like I said I'm not going to do everything at this point uh, <clears throat> so once we get that down right there then we can take our spritzer bottle which has detergent, detergent and water and just go ahead and do this so we spray it up and now while it's wet I can start putting my other ground covers on there and believe it or not it will stick now it seems to me that we have a little bit of a bare spot right here we'll take care of that, that Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and hit this with some different color uh, ground cover uh, just to give it some life. And then I do have some uh, puffs, 
some R3, uh, I mean, uh, not 3, some um, Yeah, total loss of words right now. Tufts, that's what they are, yeah. Total uh, um. <clears throat> Come on, Vincent, get it out. <laughs> and as you can see, when I come back here tomorrow, all of this will be secured, uh, just as if we did it the original way. All right, so we got enough of that, that one down there. What else we got? Now we've got to remember guys, this, this is the desert, and so there'll be a lot of burnt grass, and so that's what we're going to hit on here next. And then... Now these ones you'll have to add a little bit of glue to, and that's no big deal because we would do that anyway, but these are just uh, bushes, Woodland Scenics bushes, and I'm just going to scatter these around. Now you remember this is desert, so all of these bushes really would be some sort of a cactus. And uh, before we get done with this video, I'm going to go ahead and run a train into this track that I changed out, and let's just see if it fits. I know it fits because I already did it. But I want you guys to see that your suggestions actually worked with a minimum amount of work to do. <clears throat> Alright, so let's see what else I got here. Green grass. Alright, we could put some green grass in there. Just a little bit here and there. Now just that little bit just brings the whole thing alive. Alright, what else do I want to put in there? I think I have some blended turf here someplace, yeah. Alright, the final thing we're gonna put on here is some blended turf. This track is not glued down now, but it will get glued down in a little bit. Now this is a Woodland Scenics product, it's, it's blunted turf, and we're just going to go ahead and just sprinkle a little bit on here, just to blend it in with, with what I already have done. Now, for the ballast, we're just going to do this one track right here. Actually, we shouldn't do any of this track just yet. Whoops, I just knocked it off of here. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, let me uh, put this track back on and we'll be back in in a few minutes. All right, guys, earlier I mentioned that uh, when I sifted my dirt, I get different size rocks and stuff out of it. And this is the stuff I got I'm going to use as ballast. Now, I have woodland scenes balanced, but I want to make it a little bit different. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put seven of these teaspoons or spoons in here and then one teaspoon of the other stuff. But as you can see, it's just a little bit more coarse than the uh, um, woodland scenics ballast. And it's almost exactly the same color. But I thought a little difference in the ballast would look nice. Especially because it's an industrial area. Alright, so we got our seven in there. And now we're going to add one of these. Oops. Oops. This is actually your glue. This is what it is. When you mix it with your ground cover and stuff, it makes everything the glue. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this up, nice and pretty. And we're going to start with 
this uh, run around track. Now I do mine with a spoon. A lot of guys, I was going to use a, a condiment uh, dispenser, but like I said, this ballast is so fine that it just flies out too fast and I don't have any control over it. Now, like I said, this stuff is the glue. This track has not been glued down, but when I wet, when I wet it with this, it will get glued down. Oops, again, I pulled it apart, son of a gun. <laughs> it's just that these rail joiners are a little bit loose. I, I filed down too much on the, tr on the track. And now I can't, <laughs> I can't find the hole. There it is. All right, there we go. I got to remember to hold that. Put my bumper back in there. All right, so let's continue. Now a lot of it is still got to get some uh, some ties installed. But I can do that afterwards. I know you're saying, you're crazy. Why are you doing everything backwards? Well, like I said, I'm, I'm tired of looking at this piece of plywood being bare for so long. I'm just using my fingers. A lot of you guys will use brushes and stuff like that. And that's cool. Whatever works for you, this works for me. Now on the outsides, again, I, I think my arm is in the way. I just do it like this. It really doesn't matter how pretty it looks because again, it's an industrial yard or an industrial complex, I should say. But it gives the appearance that the ballast is there. All right, now we do the same thing on the outside of the track. Trying to get some of this off the side of the rail and in, into the ties. I'm going to hold this, make sure I don't knock it off again. I'm thinking about getting one of those uh, ballast spreaders by Trozies. I think it's Trozies. And just to see how that works. Because I know you guys are saying, look at this crazy guy doing this by hand. <laughs> but this is the way I've been doing it, and it seems to work for me, so I'm okay with it. Yes, I use my fingernails also. Just a bit more over here. And a bit more in here. And we'll hold this track again. Try and clean as much of this up as you can before you put the glue on. It's a little bit easier, I think. All right, so you can see right now that I have partially ballasted the track and some scenery. And it makes that area look a whole bunch different right off the get-go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue doing this ground cover and stuff all the way down uh, the yard here. A lot of it's already covered. I just need to add some color to it. But uh, I will uh, might do this in a uh, fast forward. Anyhow, I'm gonna let this dry for now and we'll continue this in a little bit. Talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye for now. It's funny, I forgot the most important part. Now is the time that you actually put water and alcohol and detergent or whatever your combination is on here. And you'll see that it, it doesn't need to have uh, the extra step of spraying at first. This is a pipette, and that's how I do my ballast. And as you can see, it just soaks right in, just as if there was alcohol and stuff on there already. 
This is good stuff, guys. If you don't like doing ballast, this will definitely uh, help you out a bit. I know everybody doesn't like to do ballast. But as you can see, it's getting sucked in just as if, if it was, uh, if we first sprayed it with the alcohol and water. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's what makes this stuff so cool. Put some down here. Yeah, I got it with enough. Now on the main lines, these guys out here, I'm going to use the regular ballast. I just want to differentiate between an industrial area and the main line. I don't have to be doing what I'm doing right now. But since I already had it mixed up, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because all of these bushes need to get a little douse of glue because they don't uh, they don't stick with the stuff that with the uh, ground cover stuff. So we'll go ahead and do this on these bushes. So now, 50-50 glue solution, and we'll just give a drop on each one of these little bushes here. Well, more than a drop. We want to stick. I'm gonna have to get another pack of cactus to put in this area too, because like I said earlier, it is a desert and there are cactus everywhere. All right, <coughs> we're gonna let that dry up and uh, we'll see how it looks in a little while. And now, like I said, we'll clean this track up. We'll run a train on there and I'll show you how, uh, how two SD40s and four tankers could fit in that siding now. Stay tuned, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, here we go. This is gonna be a uh, partially completed uh, scenic uh, area in the Sierra Adobe ethanol plant area. So we start here and this is what I had done previously and then I just continued on in this area here. Uh, but I did uh, order some more uh, static grass and uh, more uh, more color grass because I want to add some more color to this. But as you can see, it look, it's looking pretty good I think. Um, <clears throat> all the way down to here. Now this area right here I am going to put a small, I think I'm going to put a small industry there. I have the turnout ready to go if I want to do it and then hook up the rest of the track here. Uh, I have a small um, uh, gas company like uh, uh, welding supplies and stuff like that I could put here which would be okay. Uh, but anyhow, as you can see, I didn't make a whole big difference on how this area looks. And I start to realize that I'm sorry, I'm going to show you a bunch of junk in the way right now, but <clears throat> I just need to freshen up this area and come around to this side here very slowly and then freshen up this area right here, then this entire lower section will be scenic or at least have ground cover on it. Anyhow, the big issue we had with this was can I get two SD40s and a four tank trains on this track right here. So stay tuned and we will see how that's gonna work. Be right back. All right guys, let's see if we can get our train to go through. And it's the same two locomotives and the same four tankers that I had on here previously. And this track is not 100% clean, it is clean enough for the, to run this train but it's not entirely 100% clean so I might have a stall here but uh, it's looking pretty good and here we go and we're going to enter the runaround track spur Look at that guys, we're just enough room 
four tankers, two SD40s. Now, like I said earlier, these two SD40s might be assigned to this area. Uh, it might be assigned to this whole lower section area. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I do have four axle power with sound that I can use in this area if I wanted to. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that uh, I thank you all for your suggestions and all of that stuff. And I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video. And as always, your questions, comments, inputs, subs, shares, and likes are always welcome. For now, that's all folks. BNSS 6951 out.